originating from the podcast studio inside FAM 360's headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast. The Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast is designed to encourage, equip, and inspire our audience through a combination of inspirational stories and real-life experiences shared by other successful and skilled leaders in a variety of vocations. We hope that the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast empowers each one of us to step out, step up, and ultimately thrive as leaders. Now here's our host, Mr. Matt Maloney. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Matt Maloney. I am uh, thrilled to be with you today. We are going to take a little bit of a detour off the highway of our traditional podcast uh, where we have guests, and today you're stuck with me in a solo session. It's uh, a series of, of... sessions that we call solo sessions. Um, Our solo sessions are curated to focus on typically one specific topic, trait, leadership principle, so we can dive deep on those. Uh, The solo sessions that we're working on and we're going to talk about today really cover what I call proven factors that great leaders possess and continually develop. Because let's face it, if we don't continually work on something that we possess, we end up losing it. And today we're going to focus and dive deep on what is known as emotional intelligence. Before I get to that, I thought I'd uh, insert a quote here and share this quote with you. It's from Warren G. Bennis. First and foremost, let me talk about who Warren G. Bennis is. He is a pioneer of contemporary field of leadership and the founding chairman of the Leadership Institute at University of Southern California. In the 90s, he was considered one of the top thought leaders and by Business Week News ranked him as the top 10 thought leader in business. His quote is, emotional intelligence more than any other factor, more than IQ or expertise accounts for 85 to 90% of success at work. IQ is a threshold competence. You need it, but it doesn't make you a star. Emotional intelligence can. I thought that was pretty powerful. So today, uh, as I said, we're going we're gonna to dive in on emotional intelligence. So why don't we just start off with what exactly is this thing called emotional intelligence? What is EQ? And I've, I've mentioned it on some other podcasts when we've had guests. I think I may have mentioned it on a, another solo session that we had. But today we're going to take a really, really deep dive. So emotional intelligence, otherwise known as emotional quotient or EQ, is the ability to evaluate, understand, use, and manage your own emotions in positive ways to communicate effectively, to empathize with others, to overcome challenges, and to diffuse conflict. Now, there's a lot there, and we're going to go through all of that today. Uh, But I I did want to give you a little bit of background, the origins of where did this thing called emotional intelligence come from? What what are its its origins? So the origins of it derive from uh, the science of psychology and um, was emanated from research being done that looked at three major psychological factors in human beings, imagination, cognition, and personality. And in part to really see why some people were able to be more successful when put in certain environments of uh, stress or adversity versus others who were not able to uh, have the same outcome or successful outcome. The concepts were first introduced in the research that was conducted and, and, and the research was released in March of 1990. And the research paper and articles by Peter Salovey from Yale University and John D. Mayer from the University of uh, New Hampshire. If you get some opportunity just to kind of go and research, you can Google uh, those two gentlemen, you can Google their research. But it's, it's really interesting to, to see how they took a very scientific approach and, and all the research and, and um, study that they did around this and what they eventually called emotional quotient or emotional intelligence or EQ. Emotional intelligence is something that does naturally come to some people uh, easily and it doesn't come to others as easily. There's uh, certainly DNA does play a, a role in it, but other factors play a role in it. But the good news is, like a muscle, EQ can be developed, it can be exercised, it can be Im- improved and refined uh, over time. But one thing I do want our listeners to understand, and this is going to be the basis for today's conversation, that 
emotional intelligence by many scholars, business scholars, and science uh, scientists who have done research on the success of human beings as they've gone through different periods of time and different adverse conditions or adverse situations. This is considered to be the most important factor, similar to what uh, Warren G. Bennis said in his quote, it's 85 to 90 percent of, of, of the success that he's been able to see in, in people who are leaders, who are running businesses. So it is something that is so important, but not just in business, emotional intelligence. If we think about it, let's back up for a second and think about how we are emotionally with our families, um, with our friends and our community, the things that impact us personally. And you think about um, just kind of resetting, right? Setting, stepping back for a moment and resetting in a certain situation. And, and, and all of that really derives from our emotional, our ability to do that derives from our emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is so important that the FBI and the CIA inside these organizations and more particularly the people who are in charge of hostage negotiations like with the FBI or um, uh, intelligence, espionage, spying, they train heavily on refining uh, their agents' emotional intelligence. So now that we know what emotional intelligence is, um, let me talk a little bit about kind of the five key factors or five key elements of emotional intelligence. So according to Daniel Goleman, who is an American psychologist who helped to popularize emotional intelligence over the last few decades, he has identified five key elements of emotional intelligence. The first element is self-awareness. The second element is self-regulation or what I like to call self-management. The third is motivation. The fourth is social skills or social awareness. And last but certainly not least is empathy. So self-awareness, self-regulation or self-management, motivation, social skills or social awareness, and empathy. So we're going to dive today in, in each of those five key elements of emotional intelligence and just kind of unpack them and, and try to understand what they are and then certainly how they play a role in our own personal uh, emotional intelligence. So self-awareness. Self-awareness is critical um, skill within emotional intelligence. Self-aware people recognize their emotions and how their actions, their moods and emotions affect other people. So think about it, right? You walk into a room, uh, let's say you're walking into your house after a, a really tough day at, at work and um, your spouse and your children, maybe they're in the home and maybe you're walking into a chaotic situation. I can tell you that for me, um, that happens often. We've got three kids and uh, sometimes there's chaos going on in the, in the house at the Maloney household. So you walk in, you've had a bad day, you're already kind of in, a, in, a, in an emotionally fragile state of mind and the simplest little thing in the house just sets you off, right? And so all of a sudden, if I'm not self-aware, I'm not aware that I'm already going into this situation on a tank that's, that's pretty much empty from my emotional capacity, that if I'm not careful and I'm not self-aware of that, that little thing, whatever it is, is going to set me off. We've all been there. Uh, I, 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 it, it happens to me weekly. And so uh, I have to make sure that before I walk in the door, uh, sometimes I'll close my eyes and pray. I'll say a quick little prayer. Uh, if it's on a good day, that's what I'll do and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to release whatever it was that was bothering me at work. And I'm going to, uh, reset my, my, um, my thoughts and my emotions. And I'm going to walk in the house and, you know, even, even if, even if I'm faking it until I make it, I'm going to do something to reset myself so that I'm self-aware or being self-aware of, of how other things in the environment that I'm about to walk into are going to affect me. The same thing is true in, in business meetings or uh, things at work. You know, sometimes things set us off at work. There are things that uh, didn't go the way they were supposed to, or a client just notifies you that they're no longer going to be doing business with you. Right. And so when you engage with other people throughout the day, throughout your organization as leaders, we have to be self-aware of how our emotions can, can rub off and impact others. So self-aware individuals also recognize that relationships between these things 
or the relationships be, be, between these things and the way that they fe- they feel and behave will have an impact on on others. Self-aware people also recognize their own strengths and limitations and desires and learn from others. So that's one thing that um, I can share with you in my journey as a leader of our organization. Uh, I've, I've shared on prior podcasts I've, I've had on my business coach uh, who um, has helped me walk through a number of things and maybe not necessarily emotionally walk through things, but certainly how to understand and process different challenges that are coming at me and have, has given me the tools so that I am self-aware and I can um, just be a better leader at, at work. So here's the kicker. According to Goldman, people with good self-awareness are confident in themselves and are aware of how other people perceive them and have a great sense of humor. And this is one thing that I want the audience to listen to and, and understand. Humor is one of the key critical factors in emotionally intelligent people. They can find humor in themselves. They can find humor in other things. Uh, I think it was, um, what, who was it? I can't remember the name of the, the individual who, who was talking about that every day we should go through the different emotions of our lives. We should, we should have, uh, uh, you know, tears and we should have joy and we should have laughter and we should essentially go through all of these emotions and those emotions allow us to really be better people throughout the day and, and connect with others. But humor being one of the key factors here uh, that I wanted to, to highlight is such an important factor for good leaders because let's face it, who wants to follow somebody who's just serious all the time, right? Let's, 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 let's have some humor in life. And, uh, th- and that has, that, that allows, that draws people into, um, in, into the conversation with each other. So let's, let's move on to the second piece, which is self-regulation, self-management. Different than self-awareness, self-regulation or self-management is the conscious ability to control your emotions every step of the way. Leaders who are skilled in self-regulation tend to be flexible and they adapt well to change. They also or they also handle management conflict well. And, and so leaders with strong self-management skills usually rank high in conscientiousness, reading the room, adapting to the environment. They are aware of how to influence others in a positive way and take responsibility for their own actions. So this is one thing that I think that I'm, I personally am pretty good at. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly conscientious about uh, understanding how other people feel and I'm sensitive to that. Now, one thing that I'm not as good at is I'm not as good at empathy. And we can talk about that uh, on, on the fifth item uh, later on as one of these five factors. But in terms of being conscientious about reading a room, um, understanding the environment, understanding how other people uh, are feeling, how they're responding to the conversation. It's a critical, critical factor in emotional intelligence, but it's something that as a leader, we need to be aware of and certainly work on. I've worked with people, uh, people that have uh, been peers of mine and and, uh, people that have worked for me. They were outstanding in terms of their business acumen, but their self-regulation, their ability to regulate and manage and be conscientious about how other people are feeling in the room was was lacking, and it showed, and it uh, and and it had a, an, a ne- an impact, a negative impact on some of the people that were that were around them. And those people self admitted it too. They they knew that they needed to work on that that aspect of it. This is important. This final point on self regulation, self management. If we're going to have as leaders effective self regulation and self management, we we need to take care of ourselves emotionally. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to take time to allow ourselves to step back. Some people talk, call it, you know, st- stepping out and, and uh, seeing the forest through the trees. Self-care is an absolute must if we're going to have good self-regulation and self-management. Next is Motivation. This one may seem seem obvious, but there's more than meets the eye here. People or leaders who have strong EQ have very strong personal motivation, and they aren't necessarily motivated by external rewards. 
like applause, flatter. Those, those things are great, but it's really quite the opposite. Those who are competent in the area of motivation as this part of EQ tend to be action oriented. They set goals. They have high, they have a high need for achievement, but it's something that comes internal for them. They're not necessarily motivated by the external reward. They're, they're motivated by the internal reward. They're motivated themselves by accomplishing whatever that particular task or objective is. And just by completing it is motivate or is a reward enough, uh, you know, for themselves. Moving on to the fourth element, social skills and awareness. And I think, in my opinion, this is probably one of the biggest ones. It's a fact. Emotionally intelligent people are actually aware of their surroundings and how to speak to a wide range of people. In my opinion, as I said a moment ago, this is one of the, probably the second most important trait of emotionally intelligent people. Maybe another way put is that great leaders must have strong social skills and awareness. Let's face it, if you're a leader of people, whether it's in your home, whether it's a sports team, whether it's in business, whether it's in the church or in the community, you need to be relational, having the ability to have a relationship with people. And that requires social skills and social awareness. Emotionally intelligent people with strong social skills and awareness are not only able to communicate well, right? So communication is certainly one of the major factors of great leaders, but not only are they able to communicate well, but they're able to assess or discern, be aware of information and subsequently put it to work in their daily interactions and communications with others. This, I said it may be the second most important factor. I, I, I can argue that it's the most important factor, but scholars, certainly people who are much smarter than I am in, in terms of emotional intelligence in this part of, of, uh, of leadership uh, argue that uh, this next component, this last component, the fifth component, empathy is the most important. But I could, I could argue that social skills and awareness are, are the most important, perhaps in my mind. So let's transition to the last one. Empathy. Different than sympathy, empathy requires significantly more commitment to acknowledging, understanding, and walking in a person's emotions. The people with the strongest EQ rank very, very high on the scale of empathy. Now, I told you earlier that this is an area that I struggle with, but it's an area that I work on. So in my quest to refine, to build, to exercise my EQ, my emotional intelligence, this is one area that I have to work on. Sympathy, I've got that, right? I can sympathize with people. Empathy, though, it requires a time commitment. It requires us sitting with the people and the, um, the people that are facing an adverse situation and sit and sometimes just sit and listen and try to identify with them. I myself, I try to solve the problem. I do this all the time with my wife and she tells me all the time, I, I don't need you to solve the problem. I just want you to listen to me and I want you to, to maybe understand my perspective. And that's something that, that I absolutely struggle with. I immediately go into let's solve it, let's fix it mode. Uh, so for me, empathy is something that I have to continue to work on. So the people with the strongest EQ rig very high on em the empathy scale. They have sincere responses with others about their feelings. Uh, and this really allows them to connect on a deeper level with people. Uh, Brene Brown, who is a famous author, I love her work. If you haven't seen or read any of her books, or um, she's, there's even some videos out there on, on some things that she's done, I highly recommend checking out Brene Brown. But she says, empathy is connecting with people so we know we're not alone when we're in a struggle. I mentioned earlier about uh, many how the FBI agents and the CIA agents train on EQ. Well, of all the areas, empathy is the one that allows these trained agents to be incredible negotiators. Uh, and there was a story, and I don't recall the, the gentleman's name. I, th I think his name was Chris Voss, and he is regarded as probably the number one negotiator uh, for the FBI in, in diffusing situations. He's been involved in over 150, maybe 200 hostage crises. And he's the guy that they call in and, or did call in. I think he's probably retired now, uh, in some of these hostage situations where he has to diffuse the, the situation and, and empathy 
was the one central thing that he talked about that was his really secret weapon, if you will, empathizing with the person on the other side of the door or the other side of the, the, the hostage negotiation. And that's what he was an expert at. So peoples and leaders that are competent in this area are able to sense uh, who possesses the power in different relationships. They're able to tune in or be in tune with this. They're also able to understand how these forces influence feelings and behaviors. And because of this, they can accurately interpret different situations that hinge on such power dynamics. I mean, talk about important. This is why experts in this area of emotional intelligence say that empathy is by far the number one factor of the five factors. Let me encourage you to, as we, as we kind of land the plane here on emotional intelligence, let me encourage each of us that whether we're lacking in certain areas of these five factors of emotional intelligence, whatever area we're lacking on, that we can work on these. Again, it's like a muscle. We can exercise it. We can improve it. We can grow it. Again, it does come, some of the factors come easier for others uh, or for some people versus others, but we can continue to work on that. So let me close with this quote here. It's a quote from Joseph Fort Newton. We cannot tell what may happen to us in the strange medley of life, but we can decide what happens to us, how we can take it, what we can do with it, and that is what really counts in the end. So as we, uh, as we wrap up today's session to all our subscribers in uh, podcast land, I hope today's episode was both empowering and inspirational. Until the next episode, I pray that our daily journeys are filled with opportunity to lift others up as we aim to go above and beyond. Thanks, everybody. Our executive producer and host is Matt Maloney, president and CEO of FAM360. Strategic communication coordinator, Michelle Decato. Production assistance by Tin Dog Studios. Director, John Berland. Creative Assistant, Whitney Roland. Theme song, Connecting Dots by Curtis Cole, provided by Artlist. Please subscribe today and don't miss any of our weekly episodes.